Hello everyone, I'm Rob from MHRCraft, and today I would like to share with you my design for a redstone repeater based combination lock. So, I'll show you the design, show you how it works, show you how to build one, and then show you something interesting that you can do with it. So, let's get started. Well, this is the entirety of the design. Um, there are a few areas in which you could shrink it down, but I've laid it out like this just for simplicity's sake. Uh, it uses all of the materials that you see in my inventory right now. So we have 11 cobblestone, 15 redstone repeater, 35 redstone dust, 11 torches, and one button. And that, of course, isn't counting any of the redstone or uh, circuits or items that lead out from the output. Uh, it also uses three pulse shorteners and one three-way AND gate. So, yeah. So right now, I have a code set. The code is 413, as designated by these repeaters. Uh, these repeaters control the lock, so these are the ones that people would be messing around with and switching up. And it's these repeaters right here in the next row, in the red strip, that off-balance the, um, the delay so that the pulsars will all activate at the same time as long as the repeaters are matching. So the way I think, sorry, the way I think of this is that um, everything has to be equal to five. So with these two repeaters in front of me, I don't know why I'm gesturing at the screen. It's not like you can see that. Um, since this one is three, this one needs to be at two, so that's five. And the other ones are like that as well. So I hit the button, and the door opens. Excellent. Yay! Now, something interesting that I have noticed about this design sometimes um, is that it's such a it's so finicky with the pulse shorteners that if there's a number that it's incredibly close to if it's very close to the actual combination it's supposed to be sometimes it will get through however that's not a problem if you uh, saw the comparison from the last uh, button press to this one this pulse was much shorter in fact it was almost like half a pulse of the first pulse so in the next model that I have over here uh, there's a way that e that's pretty easy to demonstrate, um, and that was still set to four. All right, so this is the same model. The only thing I've changed are the two redstone torches you see over there, and when I hit the button, pulse goes through, door opens just like it's supposed to. However, when I do the same thing that I did in the last model, no, no good. The half pulse that this sends out for being close, ever so close does not get through the torches. So that's a way that you can pretty much eliminate any of that problem. I've also built these models in several different orientations, so I don't think the southwest rule is a huge um, factor for this. So, now I will show you how to build it. Um, I've laid out an area. It's uh, 9 by 15. And yeah, that's just the starting, you know, how much, how big that I, I made this particular design. So we got our lovely button that we're placing. Mm, yes. I think that's right. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, the repeaters on the white cloth blocks, those are the ones that will be where you're inputting the code. And of course, you can stretch out this design. Um, where I, these two redstone lines are, you can have anything in between that or any length that you want. However, you do have to make sure, and this is very important, when you lay down the next repeaters, the repeaters that will off-balance the first set, you have to make sure that they all turn off and on at the exact same time. And what I mean by that is, obviously, when you start inputting numbers and stuff like that, it will look different. So, let's see, this is... If this was one, two, and then three, this would have to be four, three, and two. When you hit the button, they all need to go off at the same time, ensuring that this is going to work. So just something that you need to keep an eye out for. Oops, too, a little too early for those. After that, another line of redstone dust just like that. 
and then a line of repeaters, followed by the blocks for the pulse shorteners. Now these, uh, all the repeaters on the left side need to be set to three, and the ones on the right need to be left alone. Torch on the side of the block and on top of the block for all the models, and then a line of redstone connecting those two torches. After that, it's a repeater after each torch, and those repeaters need to be set to three as well. The three on either side makes the pulse just right so that it can be read, but still fast enough so that um, other numbers that aren't supposed to don't set it off strongly. So this is the three-way AND gate. It's four blocks making a very Tetris-like shape, and then the redstone in the center, just like with the two-way AND gate. I was very surprised when I learned that that worked. I didn't discover it or anything. I just I searched three-way AND gate and found that, and I was just very I was happily surprised. Ooh, turns out I have an extra redstone torch. All right, so you need ten, not eleven. Or, yep, 10, not 11. Well, I feel foolish. So after that, just a test to make sure that all three of those on the AND gate will go off at the same time. And they do, which means it works perfectly. So that's how you build this. Um, just a final note, actually. Um, the just If you've ever built a regular AND gate before, which if you're looking at circuits like this you probably have, uh, you'll know that with the redstone dust you can't do something like this to an AND gate because I don't know exactly why personally, but I always think of it that it needs some sort of, it needs a direct runway to the torch. The same goes with this back torch, however. You can't have your repeater on this block right here because if you do, it won't register. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, this is not an area right here where you can uh, cut short the model. So, with this nice model in mind, I will show you something interesting that you can do with this. Be right back. Hey, I'm back. So, I ran into a little problem. Uh, during the little break, and it had nothing to do with my wiring or anything like that, or the device. It was uh, my minecarts randomly despawned, and I'm not sure why that is. But, not a problem. I've fixed the issue. So yeah, if you couldn't tell, this uses minecarts right now. So, uh, here I am in my fake little, my little vault room. And, uh... So rather than have, say, the code that you enter uh, open a door to get you into your vault, I thought I'd rather just have storage minecarts and it brings it to you. That way you can leave the storage carts in your nice heavily protected obsidian and lava encased fortress of doom, you know, something like that. So, um, here uh, is a blank slate with the code. It's set to 111. Um, we hit the button. And nothing happens. Obviously, because that's not the right code. Uh, so for this, let's say my code was 231. Hit the button. Play the waiting game. Ah, here we are. Thank you. 18 diamonds. A modest amount. Nothing extravagant. So, um, yeah, we get our diamonds. Our one diamond. So we can... No, let's, let's make it two. Let's... Let's splurge. You know, let's make that, that diamond hoe put in our feathers because that's important. Push the minecart back. And yeah. With our transaction done, we'd uh, reset the, the code so that no one knew what it, our secret pin was. And we'd be all well on our way with our two diamonds to make that diamond hoe. Now. If the, in this setup, it doesn't just it doesn't just have to call one minecart. It can call multiple minecarts if you have um, a setup for each minecart. So for each one of those things that I just showed you how to build, um, you would you could have another one so that with another code, 
it could do something else, trigger a different minecart, or it could be somebody else's uh, code in uh, multiplayer. So let's pretend that my friend, his code was 341. And uh, who knows what he's keeping, but he's that's his code. So let's see what's in his minecart. I'm not going to ask. I don't know why he's keeping chickens. Don't not going to ask. Anyway, <laughs> so um, let's set it back to the first code. Two, three, one. Maybe that's why my minecarts are disappearing. Stupid chickens. And I'll show you what this looks like. So um, we hit the button. It pulses that minecart, and it does its. There's like a cart switcher under there. Not really important to the device I'm showing you. And it brings you back your cart. Uh, I decided I'm not going to make that diamond hoe. So we're just going to push that back, and it goes back into place. So obviously this covers a lot of ground, but um, it could probably be a little bit more cleverly made. Uh, just as a last closing note, there's one thing I have noticed, and that's that your code that you make this, there's 64 possibilities, by the way. It's quite a lot of possibilities, considering uh, if you had a lever with just three levers. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and do that math and embarrass myself. But there are 64 possibilities with this. I counted those out. Uh, four of those possibilities, 1, 1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 3, and 4, 4, 4, they do not work very well. Uh, they will trigger the thing to work when it's not supposed to. So uh, if you just avoid those numbers, because uh, they're all the same value and that's why it's glitching it out, then you, have, you still have 60 possibilities, uh, very wide range, and it works fine. So I think that's all that I wanted to say right now, and that's all I had to show you guys. So uh, if you liked this video, if you liked, uh, well, I guess, the video, <laughs> uh, don't be afraid to leave a like, maybe a comment. That's great motivation to keep going to make more videos. Turns out, who knew? And uh, yeah. Uh, Tune in next time for more uh, MHR, for more of Morecraft. <laughs> so, thanks. Bye.